thank you, Jesus, for making provision. Hallelujah. Thank you for making provision, God. We need you. <laughs> oh, oh, even my broken heart, God. <laughs> oh, we need you, God. <laughs> hey, Father. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> Okay, we'll let Sister Shaw come first, and then you come behind her. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks. Amen. If this is your first time visiting Lighthouse, could you please stand? Your very first time visiting Lighthouse. Amen. Amen. Let's give our visitor a hand. Thanks. We want to thank you for visiting Lighthouse on today. We know there are many other places you could have went, but we thank you for stopping by our church. Um, these ladies are our greeters. They have a visitor's packet. If you could please fill it out and during offering time, lay it on the offering table. Amen. Can we give a one more hand, Saint? Amen. And at this time, Sister Shaw has an oral announcement. Thank you, Sister Hugger. Good morning, Saints. How many of you all feel the glory of the Lord? 
in these sweet of this honey in a honeycomb. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Ah, glory to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm up to stand before you to make an announcement. Excuse me. I love Jesus with all my heart. <laughs> All of my soul and all of my mind. Oh, bless his name. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, I hope and I pray that you are experiencing the fullness of God in your soul. Saints. Oh, ah, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Ah, Pastor, play, I can share something that the Lord has put in my spirit. With Sister A, one before Sister Anthony was speaking, if many of you all, if you look at the news, you've seen what happened. What is it called? I think the typhoon. Uh, uh, what happened over there? The Lord was saying to me, He said, Trisha, He says, There needs to be a typhoon at Lighthouse. He says, There are so many of you all. You come to church as a religion. You're not living in your kobo shalabaha. He said, you're not living that life. Monday through Saturday, you don't pray. You don't read your Bible. And you come here out of form and fashion. There is a remnant in this house. There are those that are seeking God. There are those that are living it. But the majority of you all, you know who you are. If you don't get right, He a typhoon will come to your place. And I'm talking about individually. This is a warning to you. The coming of the Lord is soon. Yes, God. Yes, God, the Lord said, I see you. <laughs> you can't hide from me. <laughs> it was a day when you come to church, the mothers in Zion, they are, they are coming to touch you. Sit down, baby. Because there was a keen discernment of spirit. But now there's such a hardness in the church. You almost dare somebody to come and touch you and say, sit down, because you've been fornicating last night. You've been drinking and you've been tipping. And even if they come to you, you'll look at them and lie and say, that ain't me. And you know that you, saints of God, this is not Sister Shabi and Toko Shalabai. This is the old Shelebe. This is a warning from the Almighty God. Get it right. And I don't mean just a touch from God. I don't mean the Sunday morning touch. I mean a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When nobody is watching you, you are on your face at home. <laughs> you are reading your Bible. You are passing out tracts and you are doing mission work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Give God a hand. Oh, my shit. With the righteous people, give my God a hand clap. Oh, thank you, God. I'm standing before you. Ah, yes, Lord. I'm standing before you on behalf of the mission department. Sure, I'll lift your hands before Jesus now. Father, even now, let the wind of the Holy Ghost restore everything that Satan has taken from her. So many things you have before God. So many things that God needs to do in you. It is no accident that 
you are here today. The Lord said, I'm here to visit you. I'm here to restore everything that Satan has taken from you. Receive it now. The Lord, I receive. The wind of the Holy Ghost blow you now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. I'm standing before you on behalf of the mission department. This month we are having an in-house Thanksgiving box drive. That box is for those that are less fortunate. We do believe in giving to others. If you or in a financial need and you need a Thanksgiving box, which includes a turkey. I'm going to ask that you give Elder Mayberry your name on today. We will be distributing those boxes on this coming Friday. The deadline for you to turn those boxes in is this coming Tuesday. Sister Missionary Carol Jackson Sister Carl, do you have some of those sheets? She has a list of the items that we need. If you don't feel like shopping, we will be happy to go and purchase those items for you. Please see myself, Missionary Precious, uh, Missionary Carl Jackson, Minister Ray Jackson, or Elder Floyd Mayberry. We will give out those boxes on Friday from 10 to 12 noon. Also, Friday night, which is our mission program, we will give those boxes out after that service and on Sunday. Again, if you are able to, thanks, we're asking you to make the sacrifice to sow into the lives of others by giving this Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you very much. God bless you and thank you, Pastor. I have just a few announcements. I'll be out of your way. Anyone still interested in receiving information regarding the affordable health care, please see Sister Carrie Jones. There will be a special service today at New Life Church of God in Christ in Bonham at 3. Pastor and Lady Willie Gilstrap for their pastor and wife anniversary. If you look in your bulletins in the back section, please look over the prayer list, the sick and shut in, and be mindful of these individuals in your time of prayer. These are all the announcements I have. Thanks to the hands of the conductor. We thank God for our, for our pastor, Superintendent Michael Clerk. Let's give honor to God for him <clears throat> and all the elders there on the roster with him. God bless you, Mother Thomas, as well. And at this time, we're going to ask that a uh, pastor would come along with the junior deacons to conduct our offering. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and give him praise. God bless you this morning. We honor the Lord, and we certainly thank God for his blessed favor to be here on this morning. We thank God for his goodness that keeps us, that watches over us. We do give honor and respect to the men of God, the Mayberry and all the men of Lighthouse Church of God in Christ. We salute you to uh, Sister Clara Clerkley, to Mother Thomas, and to all of you, the women of the Lord, to those of you who uh, here in the house of God, behold how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell in the spirit of unity and oneness. I thank God for the spirit that's in the house right now. Uh, there is such a presence of God that calls upon us to humble ourselves before Him, even as we were sharing on Friday night and there are so many things that are going on and the Bible just explodes the Bible
Bible just explodes with the events that are happening. Saints, we're going to have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our minds. We're going to have to guard Satan is busy in this season. Not for the very first time. That, that, that's not what's happening. The intensity of what he is doing. The intensity of what he is doing. We received a phone call Saturday morning from Sister Mary Williams, another one of her brothers. Uh, they found him deceased. And we're going to be praying for her. And then this morning I got a message and talked to Brother Aaron Deckard this morning. Some of you may have heard of an incident happening just down the road of peace, uh, his mother's sister and two nephews were murdered early this morning. Saints, look, you ain't got to like me. You ain't got to like me. But you need to get right. Some of this petty stuff we're doing, this little tippy-toe stuff we're doing, you better get it right may not like the way I comb my hair, may not like the way I tie my tie, but you know what, some of this little stuff we're doing, God is trying to tell us that time is, you can get wrapped up and distracted by so much stuff and hold on. that little euphemism God knows my heart you know God knows my heart do you know how true that is do you really know how true that is I need to as pastor do something this morning in front of you so that you know my heart you know where I am today. Praise the Lord. Let me find my scriptures real quick. Just a moment. Forgive me, I had them marked and I Matthew 7 and 12, and then Luke 6 and 31, which really are the same. Matthew 7 and 12. Matthew 7 and 12 says, Therefore all things, Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Why? For this is the law and the prophets. All things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, even so do to them. Then St. Luke chapter 6. Thirty-one. Which 
just the same verse. As you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. If you have the King James Version, then it is written in red. So it is Jesus speaking. And then Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Mr. Lover, would you come, sir? Would you stand over here? Just right there. Some of you do, some of you don't. But we're saved and we live by the Bible and not by emotions. If a man be overtaken in a fault, you preachers on the platform stand up. Ye which are spiritual, do what? Such a one how? Considering yourself, least ye also. What does verse 2 says? And do what? This young man came to us, came to our office. Some of you know, some of you don't. And did what the Bible required him to do. And according to the Bible, this is the house that he knows. This is the house he will be restored to this morning. Come on down, man. We receive him as a member of the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ again. Whatever his yesterday was, that's his yesterday. Whatever he did, that was yesterday. He came with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He said, Pastor, if you will receive me, I humble myself before you. I believe it's time for me to come home. This morning we receive him. Yesterday is yesterday. If you hold on to yesterday, it's because you can't forgive. We receive our brother as a member of the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ. We receive him as a brother who has repented. We receive him as a member of the ministry of this house. I receive him as pastor. I restore my brother according to the word of God. Receive him. So that there is no mistake when you see him. So that there is no mistake. What is he? That's none of your business. You leave that alone to God. Why is it? You leave, you leave him and God alone. As you want men to do to you, you do it to them. If you want to be restored, you restore. You want to be forgiven, you forgive. That's what the Bible says. And we do that in the name of Jesus to a man who has come and said, I need to come home. I need God to finish what he's doing in my life. And we don't do this in the corner. I don't want him standing in this pulpit and you wonder what's going on. I want you to know publicly, I ain't hiding from nobody. I receive him. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. just one of them little bitty, you know, you ever sing to yourself and it don't make sense and it ain't even cute, but you like it? Yeah, I had one of them, nobody mad but the devil, nobody mad but the devil, nobody mad but the devil, and I don't care, Uh, nobody mad but the devil, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Nobody mad but the devil and I don't care. I just want them little things. I do. That's all it is. Just say that. Nobody mad but the devil. Nobody mad but the devil. Nobody mad but the devil and I don't care. Nobody mad but the devil. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Nobody mad but the devil, and I don't care. Anyway, thank you, thank you. God bless you this morning. That's just one of them things you just be going through life, and you just kind of have one of them moments, and you, you know, you've had some spinach like Papa, and you're feeling real good. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you this morning. We're going to have to get us some towel praises so John don't have to be by himself. Y'all got a handkerchief? transfer of some kind. I think that's what happened. I ain't, I ain't exactly sure. But then some Merlin Brown moves. See, only Merlin Brown can come to church with those, yeah, <laughs> and look good. <laughs> yeah, we we going to get us some turquoise. <laughs> yes, Lord. Where else some? Yes, Lord. Amen. God bless each of you. We want to pray that you're ready to share on this morning. I 
I must say to you that last Sunday's offering was very weak, very weak last Sunday, and uh, praise the Lord. Uh, but we don't we don't sell cans uh, to take care of the church, and uh, we don't uh, you know collect papers and take it down and sell it to take care of the church. We don't you know do those kind of things. God has ordained that the church should be supported through tithe and offerings and so he blesses us to be a blessing to the body of Christ I'm I'm giving $300 this morning I'm not asking you to give $300 I'm asking you to increase what you're going to give if you wrote your check tear that one up and write another one for a little bit more I'm serious I'm serious let me give $300 and then we get the report back and the Report says the offering was thirteen hundred, and three of that was mine. That doesn't feel good as a leader. Amen, amen. Didn't say how much more to write it for. I just said write it for more. If ever, amen. The past I gave all I have. Then that's all you can do. That's it. You know when you're out of breath, you're out of breath. Unless you get a second breath, you don't have another breath. Amen? But those of you that can, tear that check up and write another check. Those of you that can, open that envelope and put another something, something in that. I need you to do that for the sake of your church on this morning. Amen? Have not because you ask not. I've made the request, and I trust God to speak to you and touch you this morning. Good to see my friend this morning, sitting back there with his wife all the way from Louis. Anyway, praise the Lord. You know who I'm talking about. Amen. God, we love you this morning, and we thank you. What a blessed privilege it is to be in your house and to be called the children of God. Father, I make the request this morning that in this house we would give as you've blessed us to give. Now, God, even as we respond to the needs of this house, I pray that you bless every gift and every giver and respond to them according to their faith and even according to their obedience. For you said, Behold, to obey. You put more emphasis on the obedience than you did the sacrifice. To obey is better than the blood of bulls and ox. To obey. It's better than the blood of bulls and oxen to obey. I have made the request known for those that would give in the spirit of obedience. Let there be something special for them for their obedience and the performance of that thing. Now, God, there are some that would that cannot. But, God, you've caused us to be rich in spiritual things. Those that cannot, God, bless them also according to their faith, so be it unto them. Bless their seed, and then cause that harvest to be multiplied, because they give it cheerfully, they give it liberally. I make these requests in Christ Jesus' name, and I decree and declare that according to your word, you are to rebuke the devourer, so that our fruit would not fall before its time in the field. And I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you stand all over the house this morning, beginning at the rear? Would you begin coming and sharing your gifts on this morning?
say man by ushers and on earth they come. Is that the baby, Sister Dolores? That's the baby we've been praying for. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you if everyone has given. Everyone has given. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Thank you. My grandson. Handsome grandson. My intelligent grandson. My smart grandson. My enthusiastic grandson. My witty grandson. My talented grandson. My athletic grandson. Well, he slowed down on that one. <laughs> I was going to, I, I had thought as pastor I, I would be able to introduce the speaker this morning, but the presider said that they were going to introduce the speaker. So since I put people in position to do things, I will humbly acquiesce and take my seat and give you back into the hands of the presider for this morning. Save. Yeah, go ahead and say what you're going to say there. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to uh, prolong the time. Um, I do know that there is more that God wants to do this morning. And uh, I, I won't be out of order and try to call anyone out because uh, God is saying that he's going to do that through the word. And particularly, there are a couple of people who are really tugging at my heart this morning. And, um, and, and, and especially if those are men and God is going to minister the word through a, through a man, then he's going to do that. And I believe that if you stay to the end, someone needs to hear that. There is couple of gentlemen who came this morning and may have thought of tipping out, but I need to tell you, you need to stay till the end, because God has a word for you on this morning, and it is uh, my honor to introduce the speaker, uh, it's none other than the other Michael Clerkley Jr., and uh, I've known him for about 25 years of my life. And uh, we became very close friends uh, in the church. And, you know, we became so close, we messed around and got married and had two beautiful children. <laughs> and, you know, God has blessed him. He is anointed to preach the word of God. And he stays up, not just when it's time for him to preach, but he stays up daily studying the Word of God and, and conversating with me about the Word of God and asking questions about it, and we just go back and forth. But he is a preacher. He is a wonderful husband. He is a beautiful father. I mean, his children just adore him. I can think of one in particular who just really adores him so much that when she looks at him, she just kind of melts and gets all giddy. But uh, he is really being an example to his own son. When I watch him in the house, if, if there's a night that he can't be at home with us, he, he coaches his son and he tells him, look, you've got to be the man of the house. I want you to go through that house. I want you to check every door, make sure the doors are locked, and you don't lay down until Mama and, and, and Gieris are okay. And he does that when his dad is not there. He sits with his son and opens that Bible with his son. He will ask his son about a particular scripture and, and converse with him like he's an adult. But he does that as a father, and he has just been a, a great example to them. But I am just so uh, glad that God is going to share the word with us this morning through him. He is an energetic fireball. Y'all know that, right? So if you tired and you thought it was over... I don't think so. There is a word, and he is going to prick someone's heart this morning through the word of God, and deliverance will come. If you hadn't gotten it through your praise, if you didn't bring it with you, 
you have one more opportunity to get it through the word and through the altar ministry. So before he comes, we are going to uh, hear the word of God, uh, hear the, a song from the Firehouse Youth Choir. And then after that, did you want to say something about your dad? Did I say it all? Yeah, they said, I got it, Dad, okay? So after the choir, you will be in the hands of the Elder Michael Clerkley, Jr. for the word of God.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you even now. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your visitation, oh God. We thank you for inhabiting this place. God, we thank you for communing with us, oh God. God, we just thank you with all of the turmoil that's going on in this world, oh God. God, we thank you for releasing your power, for giving us this privilege, oh God. God, not because we any good, but God, you have privileged us, oh God, to just be able to relax in your presence. God, we ask even now in the name of Jesus that you will word our mouth, O oh God. We ask that the meditations of our heart, O oh God, God, will be accepted in your sight. In the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, God, we just ask even now in the name of Jesus that if it's a black backslider here even now, God, God, that you will bring them back, O oh God. That you will let your word, O oh God, pierce, O oh God, and remind them of your goodness and your love. God, those the ones that may be bound or, or not set free, O oh God. God, we ask that your word, O oh God. God, we ask that your word, your word set us free, O oh God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word, O oh God. Your word, O oh God. God, we just ask, O oh God, that you will bless us even now in the name of Jesus, that your presence will continue to be here, O oh God. We ask that you will give us grace and give us your power. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, you may be seated. First, we want to give honor to God, who's the head of our life. We want to give honor to our pastor, Superintendent Clerkley. Let's put our hands together. And to every, to our assistant, Elder Mayberry, and to all of these preachers and, and men of God, and to all of the brothers of Lighthouse, to our elect lady, elect lady clerkly, and to all of the women, Mother Thomas, Mother Robinson, and to all of the women of God, to my own wife and my my children, um, I thank God. Uh, she was talking about Diaris, and uh, I thought she was going to tell it on Diaris because we, was, we sat down to eat some breakfast this morning, and uh my wife was bringing me a cup of water and my daughter immediately stopped her and said daddy don't want no water like that you're getting it out the faucet and daddy don't want water out the faucet and so my wife stopped and said so what do you think he wants he wants the filter water my wife said this is filter water anything else you want me to get for your daddy she said no thank you <laughs> <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to jump up and get my wife real fast, though. <laughs> and tell me how to take care of my husband. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my baby. But I thank God for my wife. And, and I've said this before a week, but I'm going to say it again. And I think every time I say it, she, she kind of frowns her face up. But uh, that was a time when I had... Uh, a truck like Brother Sanders, Paul Sanders, nice big red truck, big tires, rims, look real good, shine to up. Yeah, 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 I still think about that, baby. But uh, had an accident and totaled out the truck. And so I was driving uh, a car that I was not comfortable in anymore, that was way lower to the ground, uh, didn't have all the amenities that my truck had. Uh, whether you washed it or put wax on it, it didn't look no different. <laughs> so I did, I did not enjoy driving that car. <laughs> but uh, we did. We went to the different car lot, and I just wasn't happy. Yeah. You know when they tell you we going you gonna have this insurance, you gonna have this interest rate, and you gonna pay this amount. So I just, uh, I didn't cuss. Don't worry about that. I didn't fight nobody. But I did let this young man know you out of your mind. Because there ain't no way you're going to tell me what to do. And it's my money. And so I immediately walked out of there. But uh, I went and told my wife at that on that Saturday. I said, I don't need your help. I'm going to do this on my own. And that made her upset. 
because she was the one that was helping me trying to find the car because she knew I wasn't happy in the in the parent car. And so she gave me a, she called me at work one day and said, I want you to meet me up at the Mazda dealership. I said, baby, I don't want to go through this. We already been through this. I ain't trying to go through this no more. I already know the story. And so she said, just meet me at the Mazda dealership. And so we went up there, and she said, I want you to pick any car you want. And so I told her, I know what we have. <laughs> she said, pick any car you want. I said, well, I'm going to sit here and go through all of this. And you know, they come up and they start talking all that good talk. I said, you ain't said nothing until paper is signed and I got keys to a car. So nothing is not going to incite me to test drive a car until the papers is signed. And so he kept going, and I looked at my wife. She said, I was approved. Don't worry about it. And so she let me pick out the car that I wanted. I set off in that baby, and I took the test drove. I set it all the way back. I set it all the way back, and I leaned the seat back just in case somebody wanted to sit behind me so they'll know who can and who cannot sit behind the driver because the driver's supposed to be comfortable. And so, long story short, my wife bought me a car. <laughs> Nancy? <laughs> Nancy Marie. <laughs> so my wife bought me a car. And I kept looking at it. I said, do you know what you just did? She was like, yeah. I said, no, 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 no. no. I said, you didn't need, I didn't sign nothing because they were talking to her. I was trying to put some input, but they didn't even care what I was saying. They were solely concerned with the person that was paying for the car. So there was no pride. There was no uprising in my chest. I sat back and I humbly accepted the keys to my new car. <laughs> so I do, I really thank God for my, my wife. Uh, there's an old song that says, she may not be perfect, but she's perfect for me. And so whether you wanna, and it's dangerous to do this, man, don't don't play with the thought of what if you was with somebody else. Don't play with that thought. Because the one you have at home will be way better than anything your mind can ever think. Don't ever play with the thought, what if? What if the grass is green on the other side? Of course somebody's going to do something better than the one you got at home. But they, it's going to be a lot more hell over there because this one know how to put up with you. She already know what you like. She already know how, what you want to drink. She already, yeah, no tap water. I won't filter water. Now I got to deal with somebody else. Don't give me no tap water. Did you know this? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> I love my wife. Will you turn in your Bible since I have been instructed? <laughs> to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 4, and we're going to read 4 through 7. And I want to talk about retaining the victory, keeping the victory, preserving the victory. And the reason why I want to go here is because there has been, since we went on a trip, uh, wherever the Glen Rose, uh, when we went out there to Glen Rose doing the whole place, the devil was not just, he was always there. No matter what happened, the devil was always somewhere in the background. Not that he attacked every time, but he was always there looking. He was always there seeking, trying to devise a scheme to see where can I come in. So not every time the devil hand is on something, but he wants to see how vulnerable you might be. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4, it says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain 
my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. And if you don't mind, I want to read from the New Living Translation version, uh, verses 1 through 7. And it says, My children, listen when your fathers correct you. Pay attention and learn good judgment, for I am giving you good advice. Don't turn away from my instructions, for I too was once my father's son, tenderly loved as my mother's only child. My father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom, develop good judgment. Don't forget my words and turn away from them or turn away from them. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for wisdom will protect you. Love wisdom, and wisdom will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Because sometimes we, I, it, I'm going to say me, sometimes I assume that because of a certain age, you might be wiser or the wisest. But I have learned that the wisest person is not always the oldest person. Age only equals experience. That means you have only experienced a lot of things. That don't necessarily mean you are wise at everything that you have experienced. Now, when you experience something, the definition of being wise is to get quality experience out of your experiences. When you get quality experiences, that make you wise because the next time it comes up, you have good judgment. But the person that keeps doing the same thing and making the same mistakes, the de by the definition, by the definition, you're not a wise person. You're just a person that's full of experiences. But if I can read, and I, this, this is the clerkly Bible, the King James, the Strong. The Strong's coordinates. If I can read from this, it says the actual term Proverbs was derived from the Latin title that the book was given, Proverbium. The theme of the book is found in Proverbs 1 and 7. And Proverbs 1 and 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fools despise. Wisdom and instruction. The Bible says, by which wisdom comes is revealed fearing the Lord. And so we have to look at, like the, when we, look, when we listen to the word proverb, we think of like wise sayings. And so I looked up some wise sayings and very familiar sayings. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. Those who live in glass houses, shouldn't throw stones, stones or rocks. I like this one. It is better to be smarter than you appear than to appear smarter than you are. <laughs> I want to say that one again. It's, it's going to hit home for us. I ain't going to chunk no rock right there, but I'm going to just say it again. It is better to be smarter than you appear than to appear smarter than you are. <laughs> it, don't if you come if you meet Kriner during the week and you see how Kriner dressed, don't let them clothes fool you. Kriner will walk circles around you. Yeah. Don't don't let the clothes fool you. I was standing with Kriner and we were standing in front of one of the brothers' trucks and Kriner said, uh, "It's been a while since he changed his oil." I said, "How do you know?" He said, "I can smell it." He said, "Watch this. When's the last time you changed your oil? It's been a while. I told you." I'm looking at quite a, you sm what are you, I'm, sniff I'm sniffing, what are you smelling? There's an old Chinese verb that says, learn till old, live to old, the, and there is still one third not learned, meaning that no matter how old you are, there is still more learning or studying left to do. We have... Sister Yarbrough, uh, 
Elder Brian, we have several people that went back to school. No matter how old you get, there's always something left for us to learn. And so I, I was thinking about just the persistence, and, and I spent some time with, with the elder minister, John Livingston, Deacon, <laughs> I call all of them, uh, Livingston, and what got me was the time we was together was how is it that we can jump from one end to another? We have victory, but then we don't have it. We have possession of it, but then we lose it. How is it that we, we maintain such, such things and then all of a sudden lose it? And I thought about the animal kingdom. You know, Pastor loves to look at the animal shows. But I, I, I saw something different one day. I was over to the house, and I saw something different because I always assumed that the enemy only attacks the weakest. I've always assumed that the lioness only attacks the weakest wildebeest, but I saw something different. I was sitting over there, and I saw the lioness attack a strong wildebeest. And so, first of all, what the lioness do is that they survey. They survey. They know where they are. And you have to understand that an attacker an attacker knows its prey. It has an appetite what it's going to hunt for. They know their characteristics. They already know this ahead of time. And if, and if you can go back, turn, turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis. I want to show you something. I believe it's chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, if you would go over to chapter 3, when God curses the serpent. And he says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all of the days of thy life. Now, I'm taking this literally and not figuratively. So if we go back and see, And the Lord God forms man out of the dust of the ground. Chapter 3, verse 14. Every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou crawl, and dust shall thou eat. He has an appetite for what we've been made of. I'm taking that literally. What we was made from was dust. And what he was cursed to eat, what he was cursed to have an appetite for, who do you think he go after of nothing on the women? But who do you think, if he gets the head, your arm can be amputated, your legs can be amputated. Every, there we have things that, that can replace those, but once the head is gone, once the seed has been cut off, there is no need for an incubator no more, if you get what I'm saying. There's no need if I cut off the seed. Procreation is no longer here. There's no longer reproduction. So first, the lioness surveys or observes the group, what they want. And then secondly, I saw them uh, strategically, I have, help me, baby. Yes, position themselves until they're able to identify. I got that from you. <laughs> they set up themselves until they see the weakest area or the weakest point, not necessarily the weakest wildebeest or whatever the prey is, but have you noticed that it's not just one position that they move in? 
they move around until they see. And then normally, not all of the time, normally the wildebeest know that they are there. But the lioness only show you the right hand because there's some in the bush over here. And so the wildebeest assume that we are safe because he's up in the mountain. But what he is not aware of that he has been, uh, uh, the lioness have been observing his actions all along and noticing who's weak, who's strong, who's vulnerable, who's available. And so you see there is a weak area. And when they have set themselves up, and then the diversion, what we've been talking about, the diversion happens. And when the diversion happens, and then everyone scatters. Now you have to know that everybody understands what they've been taught. Everybody understands the babies are always close to mama. They understand if I run in a group that they will not get me. But something happens in the midst of diversion that they lose or not longer to, to retain the knowledge that they have been taught. That means the weakest one and the strongest one are not able to retain because out of the diversion, then there is confusion that happens. And you see them causing the diversion. Now, I got something to say because normally we, we are on more about the babes, the saints that are just saved. I want to let you know that it's not just the babes that fall. People that have been living saved for a long time. Saved all day. No evil have I done or apt to fall to temptation. It's no different. Sin is sin, whether you've been saved for 30 or 30 minutes. But what happens is the diversion is caused, the confusion. They get disoriented. You know, like in the army when they throw the flash bomb, they throw the flash bomb in the room to disorient the men, to cause them to be, be confused so they can come in and do what they do. And the next thing they do is that they attack. But what was so profound was when they caught a wildebeest that was strong, the wildebeest understands that I can kill the lioness. And the lioness stood back because they understand that the wildebeest can kill them. But one of the things that they do is that they go after their throat or their mouth, which simply means that they suffocate them. They literally take the life away from them. And what, what I saw was they, they all didn't jump on them. One was, tr yes, setting up to take the oxygen. And everybody stood. And when the life is sucked out of you, what I saw, the wither, at first the wither beast was kicking. He was moving his head. And he was knocking, knocking lions off until one got a hold of him. And when one got a hold, he was still fighting until the life slowly was being sucked out of him. Yeah. And when the life was being sucked out of him, then that means no longer I have energy to fight. And what I saw was the wildebeest begin to lay down because of no more life or the lack of life or the lack of oxygen. And when the wildebeest began to lay down and then... Then I saw the other lions to jump on. And then because of the weight, the weight of the other lions began to press this strong wildebeest down. There's a spiritual connotation to this, and I'll get to that. Began to press him down and suck the very life out of him until they began to rip him apart, that no longer he lived. Now the spiritual side of this is that the devil comes not to just destroy you, but he knows that you are strong. He knows that you can kill him. He knows that you know the word. He knows that you're a prayer warrior. He knows all of this. So what he do is he wants to slowly suffocate you. He wants to slowly suck the life out of you until you don't want to fight no more the cares of life. The, the marriage, I can't do it, I can't deal with it no more. And one of the saddest things, Brother Wheat, is that we get suffocated in the church.
It's sad that we give up because the people in the church, saints, Christians, God's people. I love him more than anything, people. I never hurt you. I never talk about you. Have caused more people to turn away from God right here in the house of God. God forbid that we cause somebody to fall or go back into sin. Been saved so long you forgot how it was. We were all born into sin and shaped into iniquity. You don't have no right telling somebody that you're better. You're not the perfect Christian. We're supposed to follow Christ. Sad. We get a million and they leave. We got people that call the saints that come in. And they no longer want to be here. Because something we did, something we said, because you wore something, because you said something, God forbid the world would know the way we love Him. We can't even love each other. Arguing in the hallways, arguing on the parking lot, and then somebody new come in here, and then they see this mess. I might as well go somewhere else. I might as well stay home. If I want to deal with mess, I might as well stay out in the sin. God forbid. Come on. It's petty stuff. We grown folks. For real grown folk. I ain't talking about what these kids say. They ain't grown. They just say it. I'm talking about for real. We grown folk. We paying bills. We dealing with life. Yeah, grown folk. Grown folk business. God forbid that we make, we cause somebody to go back into what God delivered them from. God forbid that we would do that. I want you to know that God wants you. God wants you. God wants you. No matter how suffocating life may get, no matter how suffocating your marriage may get, God wants you. Yeah, every, everybody wants you, but I want to let you know that God wants you. The Jehovah Witnesses want you, too. Yeah, Louis Farrakhan wants you, too. Buddha wants you, too. Confucius wants you. Paganism wants you. Humanism wants you. Heathenism wants you. Dogism wants you. Secularism wants you. Alcoholism wants you. The streets want you. Drug addiction wants you. Drug pushers, prostitution, gang, sexual immorality, homosexual wants you. The lesbians wants you. Disobedience wants you. Malice, backstabbing, backbiting, jealousy wants you. Envy wants you. Strife wants you. Lying, deceitfulness, wickedness, bitterness, foolishness wants you. Infidelity wants you. Adultery wants you. Fornication wants you. Idolatry wants you. Anger wants you. Evil speaking wants you. Wrath, blasphemy, filthy communication wants you. But let somebody know that I belong to God. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I belong to God. Don't matter. Yes, the devil desires you. The devil desires to sift you as wheat. The devil, the devil desires to destroy you. But God wants you. You got to remind the devil in the book of Psalms. 
I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and I, that my soul knoweth right well. The book of John says, I am a child of God. The book of Romans says, I have been set free from the laws of sin. First Corinthians says, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells in me. Second Corinthians says, I am a new creature in Christ. Galatians 5 and 1 says, I have been set free in Christ. But I want to let you know, and I'm going to be out of your way. There was a story, another show about a zebra that was trying to get away. And then the zebra was with the group of zebras. But he thought it was smarter to go a different way to get some water. But the other zebra saw that the lioness was coming. But the zebra thought he wanted to satisfy his flesh. He wanted to satisfy his thirst. He wants to go down the opposite of where the group was going. But everybody saw the lioness was coming. And you saw them begin to shout out, the lion is coming. Yeah. They didn't say the lion is coming, but you know what I'm saying. But they thought to shout out. But because he was so indulged, yeah. because he was so enwrapped with fulfilling his flesh, because he was so enwrapped getting a drink of water, that he didn't pay attention to the call. He didn't hear nobody saying, warning, the enemy is coming. Because he was so into trying to get some water until he looked up. And when he looked up, there was a hill. And the lioness met him in the water. So the, the, so the zebra had to turn around and begin to fight in the very thing that he took pleasure in. Because the devil would not let him leave the very thing he took pleasure that was going to satisfy his soul. But one thing about the zebra, zebras fight until the death. They don't give up no matter what has them. Zebras don't give up. And so I saw this zebra begin to fight. And while the lioness had his throat, the lioness pulled them down, pulled them in the water, and his back got turned. So the, now the mountain, now where he needed to go, was behind him. And so he couldn't see the very escape, but something happened. Next thing you know, the lion was on the bottom, and the zebra was on the top. But next thing you know, they wasn't facing this way. They were facing towards the mountain. And I believe in my preaching mind that that zebra saw the hills, that that zebra saw a way of escape, that that zebra said, I'm getting out of here. And even though that lion had a grip hold, had a grip hold on him, he did not want to give up. And I believe that that zebra kept looking unto the hills but when cometh thy help cause our help comes from the Lord and next thing you know that zebra kicked the lion and he had now to go up up the hill where everybody else was bleeding wounded and tired now the zebra was fleeing now he escaped from the very thing that had him. But now he's free. But some of you are like that zebra. They got you. The devil got you down. The devil got you. But I want to let you know, don't give up. 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 Turn your back. You need to start facing where your help come from. Yes, Lord. Start facing God. Yes, Lord. And let the devil know I'm not no longer yours, but I belong to God. My mind belongs to him. My heart, my heart, my heart belongs to you. My soul, my soul belongs to you, but I got to let you know that the climb, once you've been freed, it's not over. Now you got to climb through all the 
the hurt. Now you got to climb through all the pain. Now you got to climb even though you tired. If you want to be free, the other zebras was gone. But now if you want to be free, you got to get out of there and get back up. Yes, Lord. And you got to have a praise deep down in your belly to say hallelujah. Anyhow, hallelujah. Anyhow, I should have been sleeping in my grave. But hallelujah. Anyhow, I should be dead. But hallelujah. Anyhow, yeah. Yes, Lord. You ought to tell. You ought to testify. And let the devil know. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I'm an heir of salvation. I've been purchased by God. Born. 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 Yeah, yeah. Born of His Spirit. I've been watched. I've been watched. I've been watched, I've been watched, I've been watched, yeah, yeah, I've been watched in his blood, testify, tell your neighbor, this is my story, this is my song, I'm praising my Savior, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Yes, Lord. You ought to let somebody know that Jesus can work it out. Yeah. Jesus can work it out. You know the cry song. That problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, but I kept getting deeper involved. So I turned it over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it. I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out. We ought to let the devil know you stronger than the devil. You have more power than the devil. You ought to let the devil know no longer, no longer am I yours. No longer am I yours. No longer am I yours. Yes, God. Yes, God. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Adam's Redeemer. Abel's vindicator, Noah's ark, Abraham's sacrifice, Moses' bush on fire, Joshua's battle axe, Matthew's king, Mark's suffering servant, Luke's great physician, John's word made flesh, the act coming of the Holy Ghost. Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember? Yes, Lord. Don't you remember when you first got saved? Yeah. You couldn't go to sleep right without talking to him. You remember laying up in the bed, crying, praying to him. You couldn't help it but to praise God every time you got an opportunity. Yes, Lord. We ought to let the devil know I belong. I belong. I belong, I belong, I belong to God. My mind, my heart, my soul, 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 belong to God. Say yes, say yes, say yes.
And I saw that zebra run. And he got up to the top of the mountain. Even though he was away from the enemy. In my preaching mind, I think he was shouting. The reason why I said it because he got up, and even though the line wasn't there, he was bucking. He was at the top of the mountain. I got away. I know. To validate my animated thoughts, my cartoon thoughts, the Bible do says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And if I recall, a zebra has to do the same thing that I do, inhale and exhale. And I believe, in my mind, that once he got from the hold of the enemy, he thought when I get, you know what, he was bucking going up the mountain. Because I looked at it again this morning. He was bucking going up the mountain. And when he got up to the top of the mountain, you saw him going like in the distance, but he was just, wasn't even nothing around him. Y'all know we, we said God inhabits the praises of his people which will mean that God resides in my praise. But we also say a term that is, let's have a praise break, which will mean that I was doing something else and I really wasn't praising. Because the song says, praise is who I am. I praise him while I can. So for the praiser, I don't need a praise break because he inhabits my praise. My attitude is praise. My talk is praise. So I don't need a praise break because praise is who I am. Praise is what I do. And so I don't need no help from nobody. I thought about Brother Marcus. <laughs> yeah. I thought about Lori. And I just thought about a couple folk <laughs> that if they was here, <laughs> they would give God a praise. <laughs> They would lift up their hands. I believe Marcus, if he was, he's back there, but I believe Marcus, if he had the same abilities that you have, I believe Marcus would outshout all of us being bound in a chair. You don't understand, I've been like this. But if I had an opportunity just to raise my hands, if I just had an opportunity to kick my feet, if I just had an opportunity to give God praise, but I don't know if you've seen this or not. But I've seen you, Marcus. I've seen you adjust yourself in that seat. I've seen you lift the seat up, put the seat down, scoot the seat forward, and scoot the seat back. And in my preaching mind, I say, Marcus is over there praising God. Scoot the seat up, scoot the seat down, scoot the seat back, scoot the seat forward, turn the chair around, go forward. How dare us uh, that got the activities of our leader uh, and can't give God praise? Uh, how dare you uh, that got everything uh, and can't give God praise? Uh, yeah! 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 Yeah!
I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret that I do. I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. And I want the young folks to help me out. But when my body don't feel like praising them, it's just the fact I'm tired. But that don't mean I'm not going to praise them the way I, I just still got to give them a praise. And I know it's comical. But because sometimes I just don't feel like picking them up and put them down. So I adapted the jump rope. Yeah. So I can't pick them up and put them down because my body don't feel like it. So I want my young people to help me out. Because even though you can't do like everybody else, we going to jump rope our praise. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Kill, y'all know what I'm talking about. We finna give God a praise. We all in the same place, and we all with one accord. You with me? We gonna jump rope. Give me some music. Yeah. Because of what Granny, Amy, and those people did. The children of Israel, when they was in captive, the only reason that some kids were saved, not because of what they did, it was, it was because of what their mother and father did. They smeared the blood over the doorposts. And so it's not because of what they did, it's because of what their parents did. I want to let you know, the devil want to sift you. That's sweet. But because of what your family has prayed, and they've covered you, you're covered. But that don't mean that you can do whatever you want to, because God wants you. God wants to use you, and the devil can't have you. I decree and declare even now in the name of Jesus. I need your jacket, John. I decree and declare even now in the name of Jesus. The devil desires to sift you as wheat. But I declare victory and I bind the hands, the schemes, every attack of the devil that comes into your mind, that comes into your desires. I bind it and I cast it out in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Get God. Let the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost, uh, let the Holy Ghost, uh, let the Holy Ghost, oh God, in the name of Jesus, rest upon him, oh God, arrest him, oh God, don't allow Satan to consume him, 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and it is so, and it is so, yes, God, this is what I want to do, because I know he's anointed, I'm not saying I'm not anointed, but I know the level of his anointing, and it don't do nothing, I, I love him, but I know the level of his anointing, and what I want to do is, I want to put this on you, which will symbolize a covering. This is just a symbol of the covering, because you're covered. But sometimes God has to do something visible for this, for this mind. This natural mind sometimes can't, con can't consume what God do. But this is something natural, so you can see. I don't care whatever else comes up this, from this day forward. You belong to God. Your mind belongs to God. Your ways belong to God. Everything, everything about you belongs to God. Yeah. It belongs to God. Even now in the name of Jesus. God, spare him even now in the name of Jesus. Even now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Give him understanding, God. Give him understanding, oh God. Give him understanding even now in the name of Jesus. And it is so, oh God. And it is so in the name of Jesus. That you have covered him, O oh God. You have covered him even now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you will stir up the gift, O oh God. Stir up the gift even now in the name of Jesus that you put inside of him, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, stir up the gift, O oh God. We will beat the hand of Satan even now in the name of Jesus. And it is so, O oh God. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If there's one that needs or wants prayer, we ask that you will come down now. If you need salvation, we ask that you will come down now. If you just want someone to touch and agree with you, we ask that you will come down now. We have missionaries. We have preachers that will pray with you. If you would all stand, come across the. And if I can get someone to stand behind each one of these individuals. Can I get someone to stand with Aaron and Pebbles? Or you with Pebbles? If I can get someone. We got to have the ability to retain what God has said to us. We know the word. Like in the illustration, it was just an illustration of the animals, but there was a spiritual connotation to it because the enemy desires to sift us. The enemy desires to, to have us, to destroy us. But we all know. We know the word. But sometimes we just want to give up, though. Sometimes we think it's not worth it, or sometimes it's just not, not like it used to be. But if you would lift your hands there even now, even now in the name of Jesus, Danielle, would you grab the baby? If we begin to pray, even now in the name of Jesus, God, I ask that you will cover, oh God. God, cover, oh God. Cover her mind, oh God. Everywhere she goes, oh God. Cover her walk, oh God. Even now in the name of Jesus. And it is so, oh God. And it is so in the name of Jesus. I see word inside of you. I see word inside of you. But you have to hear God, I ask that you would stir up the word, oh God, that's on the inside of her, oh God, that has been taught to her, oh God, the word that has went into her ears, oh God, the word that she has learned, oh God, and the word that she has heard, even now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that, oh God, that you would regurgitate those things, oh God, in the name of Jesus, the word, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and it is so, oh God, and it is so in the name of Jesus, God, in the name of Jesus. For he's the head and not the tail, O oh God. 
He's above and not beneath, oh God. In the name of Jesus. He's at the beginning, oh God, and not the end. God, we ask that you will redeem him, oh God, from the hand of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Redeem, oh God. Give strength, oh God. Give strength and power, oh God. Comfort her, oh God. Give her peace in the name of Jesus. Give her peace, oh God. Give her rest, oh God. Give her rest, oh God. Give her rest, oh God. Give her rest in you, 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 oh God. Rest in you, oh God. Rest in you, oh God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. And it is so, brother. In the name of Jesus. For you know the way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say yes to him, oh. Say yes to him. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Yes. 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 I'll do your will, oh God. 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 Yes, Lord. 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 Even now in the name of Jesus. Heal, O oh God. Your man serving, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Restore and redeem even now in the name of Jesus. Make him brand new even now in the name of Jesus. Regenerate him, O oh God. Regenerate his life, O oh God. Regenerate his mind, O oh God. Restore him, O oh God. Restore him, O oh God. Back unto you in the name of Jesus. Restore him back unto you, O oh God. Restore him back unto you, O oh God. Restore him back unto you, O oh God. Restore him back unto you. Restore him back unto you, O oh God. Restore him back unto you, O oh God. With your love and kindness, with your tender mercies, with your tender mercies, oh God. With your love and kindness, have you drawn us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And it is so, oh God, that you have spared his life, oh God. God, and we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. And it is so, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
There are others of you that did not come. You're not sick. You're not living in sin. You're just frustrated. There's just a, a frustration that says, seems like every time I get out of one situation, another one comes. And there's a heavy frustration and vexation. I just want to ask you to come. If that's you, I'm just going to ask you to come. You ain't been smoking and drinking and just, just pastor, I just, I keep looking for the end of this thing. And just look like before I get to the end, something steps in. Come back, son, because you're going to pray for them. Sister Mary's coming. Sister Crisette's coming. Some others are coming. Just, just. Sometimes you just get tired. You just. I'm not giving up. I just, sometimes I just. I just want to go somewhere and sit down. Let somebody else fight. Just get tired of fighting. Just look like I just keep coming back. Come here, precious. Come, here. Come on with it. Come on with it, woman of God. One of the there were several powerful things that were said in the sermon. One of the one of the things that he said, and I, I kept think I kept wanting him to come back. As he was saying, Muhammad wants you, Buddha wants you. Son, I wanted him to come back and say, but you got to know God wants you. And such and such wants you, such and such wants you, such and such, but you got to know God wants you. Da 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 da. But you got to know that in the midst of all of this stuff, he still wants me. Even though he knows, he still wants me. That's the thing I want to say to you. He does know. It doesn't feel good. It's like me standing in front of my mother knowing that I broke her heart because the last thing I want to do is hurt my mother. And the last thing I want is even more so for her to know what I did. I broke her heart because I did it and now I'm embarrassed that she even knows. But here's the thing about it. When I got through, I broke down and she put her arms around me and said, but you're still my baby. And that's what I want you to know, that God loves you. And if God could be here right now, he would just say, but you steal my baby. You see that lady right there? Put, turn and look at her. And let that be the Lord putting his arms around you, saying, I know, but you steal my baby. I know, but I still love you. Father in the name of Shabbat. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Your will. Your will. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. brother. Come here, big brother. Come in. Come on this side. Let, let him let him get right there. You asked me to step into your life. I'm going to ask you to let him step into your life. He's just my big brother. He ain't perfect, but I love him so much. I just love him. I do. I've always loved him. And I want you to know that not only do I love you, I want you to have the love of a big brother. I know. I understand. And I see a lot of things. God didn't explain everything to me. But this is my big brother. And I want to share my big brother with you. Because right now you're trying to be a man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Praise the Lord. But one of the things I learned, being a man, that if I'm going to cry, I want my big brother to be there when I cry. Because I never stop being a man when I'm with my brother. He lets me be his little brother. Doesn't matter what else is going on in my, all the bishop titles and superintendent, when I'm with him, I'm his little brother, and I just rest. I don't feel like I got to do this, I got to do that, and I don't want you feeling like you have to, but that's where you are. Got to be strong for my mama. I don't want my mama to feel like, I know, I know, but I want you to have my big brother, and I want my big brother to share his love with you. Will you do that today? He's not the only one. There's a couple of guys here, a couple of them here, Floyd and Glenn and John and Billy Ray, and, and I don't mean disrespectfully, so we just, we just men. That's it. But the first person I want to share with you is just my big brother. I have no idea how it feels to get the phone call you got. I don't know. I've never had that phone call. Never, ever, ever. So I'm not going to lie to you and say I know how you feel. I just know how I feel when I'm with my big brother. And if I'm with him, we can run out of gas. It's going to be all right because I'm with my big brother. We can be hungry. I'm, all, I'm okay because I'm expecting my big brother to do something. I don't know what he's going to do. I just think if I'm with my big brother, that's what a big brother does. They said, right. That's what they do. So I never felt lost when I was with my big brother. Well, we may have been lost, but I never felt lost when I was with my big brother. I just leaned on him. And I, whatever happened, it was better. I want you to have that. Not only the place you asked me to play and the thing you asked me to do. I do that humbly and willingly. But I have some men here. This one and some more of them. I want you to embrace them as big brothers and just say to them, I, this is what I don't have. I ain't complaining. I ain't complaining because I can't complain today. But I still need a big brother. Y'all got him. Y'all got him. Y'all got him. Hallelujah. Y'all got it. Y'all get his number. Y'all get whatever y'all got to get. But y'all got it. Y'all got it. Thank you, precious. Thank you. That little old fella tried to preach, didn't he? Tell you the truth. 
that sister clerk we got some kind of song amen amen he pretty good we we say he pretty good amen i see why i couldn't do the introduction i couldn't say all that stuff that they say amen praise the lord thank you jesus Yeah, I remember this baby. Yeah, I remember this baby. God has blessed her. God has blessed her. I told her I absolutely forgot. I saw her coming down the hall. I said, what are you doing, playing football, playing soccer? You done kick some? She said, no, Pastor, remember? I just got my prosthetic. I said, my problem was when I look at you, I, don't, I didn't see you in that way. That's why my mind didn't go there. But I just wanted y'all to see God's blessing. I just want y'all to see God's favor on this baby. And she's got a process. She just looks prettier. That's all. She looks prettier. That's all I wanted. Did you want to say something? God is good, you know. And, you know, I start physical therapy next week, so... I know he's blessed me this far, and I know that he's going to continue to be with me for my recovery. So just whenever you feel down, remember that he's with you. Thank you, precious. Thank you. Thank you. That was all. That was all. I just want to show you all. I want to show you all. Look at God. Look at God. And you worried about what you're going through, what's happening, and all of that. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to pray for my sister Marion, the one that was here during the anniversary. She's going to be having bypass surgery on Tuesday. Amen. Pray for her. The Lord will see her through and regulate her kidneys. The doctor said that her kidneys wasn't doing everything they were supposed to do and uh, kind of in bad shape and all that, and depending on the heart surgery. Believe in God for everything to be well. And it doesn't get worse to where she has to go from that situation to having heart surgery and then having to do dialysis also. So I'm just believing, God, that all is well. Amen. So Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock or somewhere in that time, if they keep the schedule, Lord bless, we'll be in Fort Worth with her. And just asking you to hold Marion's name up. Amen. Some others are having surgery. Amen. Coming up, Sister Sharon Green having surgery and Sister Faye, amen. Sister Mary Williams' daughter Faye scheduled to have surgery and amen. Maybe some others and other situations going on. Yes, sir. Deacon Gray, what's going on? Deacon Gray is still in the hospital? Okay. I know he went and they kept him, but I didn't know if he's still. Amen. One will be praying for Deacon Gray. He went in for a situation and they're still um, watching him. Sister Laverne. Okay, Sister Mary. Amen. Want to be in prayer for Sister Mary Day's husband, Brother Day. Amen. Amen. All minds clear. Amen. Do want to remind you that in behalf of the missions, if you're going to make a donation, we need you to do that by this coming Tuesday. If it's going to be a financial donation, uh, please do that. Um, if it's going to be canned goods or whatever, please do that so that they can finish making up the boxes of food. And we're really trying to target in-house. Our pantry ministry, we give out probably 100 turkeys or so during this time of year. Uh, two, two hundred. No wonder that bill be so high. 
Brother Art laughed because when the bill comes, I call him in. He said, I was just waiting. I knew you were going to call me in here. All right, let me remind you every year at this time. Yeah, because when I see that bill, I want to know why we got to pay all this. But I uh, say we give about 200 turkeys out to the community. Okay? So we don't want to just do the community and don't do in the house. Amen? So what Elder Mayberry, Sister Mayberry, Sister Shaw, uh, Brother and Sister Ray Jackson, Ray and Carol Jackson, what they're doing is we're trying to be sure that people in the house are taken care of. So if you have not contacted them, please contact them and say, please put my name on there. My family is in need of a blessing for this holiday. And uh, someone came to us and said, Pastor, I just want to be a blessing to the church and bless us with some stuff and my goodness love God and love the heart of the saints amen but if you're if you're one of those persons in need please let them know so that they can get your name and if you're one of those persons that God's been good to you and you got some you know you got you can bless somebody you can bless somebody please see them and share with them what you have whether that's money or whether that's um uh canned goods, non-perishables, and all of that. Amen. Uh, YPWW tonight, and then uh, youth service on tonight. The choir and I will be going uh, probably in the next hour or so. I hope we can go and get us some Mickey D's fries and whatever and get out of here. And then, brothers, on first Sunday, first Sunday, December, is when we go down to Palestine and uh, go down there and sing and minister. And they've already asked us about it. Uh, Y'all coming? I said, yeah, we're coming. Is, is, them, is them fellas coming with you, them singing fellas? So they already want to know, is the male chorus coming to Palestine? Y'all think, y'all, listen, I... A.B. said, we ain't never seen, we just like it when y'all come. All them men, them lighthouse brother be walking in there. Y'all know how Brother Ed was walking, you know, when he, him and Brother Wheat, they both, both of them got that. Anyway, let me go and get a benediction. <laughs> Stand, please. I'm sorry, somebody else, while I'm having fun. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to see y'all. Yes, ma'am. Mother Thomas. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They've been here before. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's all right, Mother. That's all right. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all pray for Brother Ronnie Jones. We're trying to figure out where we want to put him. And uh, I like him sitting there with his wife. I like that. I like his wife sitting there with him. But uh, we got some work for him. Got some work for him. Got some, got some work for him. Amen. A couple of other brothers. We got some work for him. Amen. God bless each of you. Anything else before we give a benediction? Amen. Come on, Minister Lubbock. Give us a, Minister Smith, give us a benediction. What a word. What a word. Everyone close your eyes. Dear gracious God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this fine, wonderful pastor of this great church, God. Pastor Clerkley and his wonderful wife. And we thank you for his son that spoke this rhema word today, God. Continue to bless and lift us and take us to that next level, God. God, we thank you for what you've done this morning. For what, not only for what you've done, for what you're going to do, God. But I hear in the Spirit that you've been saying the best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, ears not have heard the things that God has in store for them that love Him. And God, we just thank you, God. And I pray that you continue to bless every one of us to be one. Make us one, God. Even as you and the Father is one. Make us one. Give us one mind to work together with the vision that you have given this great church, God, and this great leader. And God, we just thank you, God. Continue to bless the people of God. As we leave this place, God, as we depart, God, go with us and keep us safe, God. As we come again, God, we will come in the doors, not just looking around, but as we enter into the gates, we will come in with thanksgiving. We will lift you up and give you all the glory. And we'll give you all the praise, God. All the honor, God, shall be thine. This we say in Jesus' name. Amen.